All right, so we've seen how to take a augmented matrix and put it in row echelon form. We're going to extend that into something called reduced row echelon form. And it's going to be a lot more operations, but it's going to make our lives a little bit easier. And you'll see us use this many times later uh, in the next, uh, basically the rest of the semester. Um, and what's one of the things that's nice about this is that it makes it much easier to interpret what's going on in a linear system there's some computational tools that are available that allow you to do this much easier. All right, so I'll just briefly discuss some goals and go through examples and define this thing called a reduced row echelon form. So at, when this is done, you should be able to take a linear system, put it in an augmented matrix, and then go through the steps to uh, put it in a reduced row echelon form. So you should be able to do the row operations to put it in reduced row echelon form, recognize when you're done, and then take that reduced row echelon form and understand and interpret what that means. All right, so we've seen before you can take a linear system. So if I have 2x plus 3y is 31, minus x plus y is 2, I can refer to the different equations. So the first equation would be row 1 of our augmented matrix, we'll call R1. And the second equation we'll uh, put in the augmented matrix, and that's going to be represented in row 2 or R2. So what did we do before? We took our system of equations, we put it in an augmented matrix. We have 2x plus 3y is 31, minus x plus y is 2. All right, so now I'm going to go through, I'm going to look at the first row. And in the first column, there's a non-zero entry there, so this is going to be my pivot. So I can use this to put zeros everywhere below. So what am I going to do first is I'm going to take what, one half row one and then just add row two. Because if I do that, I'll get one half times two is one plus a minus one, and I'll get a zero. So let's see. If I do that, I'm going to leave the top row alone. I'm going to get a zero there. So this is going to be what, three halves, one half times three, plus 1, so that's going to be 2 halves, so that will be 5 halves, and then here, this is going to be, what, 31 times a half plus 2, so 31 halves plus 4 halves will be 35 halves. What did we do before? So before then we stopped here. This is now in row echelon form, because if I look at all the pivots, Everything to the left of the pivots is zeros, everything below the pivots is zeros, and if there's any row of all zeros, it's at the bottom. Uh, so in this case, this is now an echelon form, row echelon form, and I can stop. I can say, oh, look at row 2. What does row 2 say? Row 2 says 5 halves y equals 35 halves. So if I multiply by the 2 fifths, I will get that y equals, so multiply by 2, divide by 5, I get y equals 7. And then I can plug that up into here and substitute, and no problem. But here's the thing, is why do I need to go through and do all that when I've got everything in a nice form here, and if I multiply every th number in this row by the same thing, it's a valid row operation, and the equation remains consistent. So let's do this. Let's just leave this top row alone. I multiply everything by two fifths, then I'm going to get a 0, 1, and a 7. And I basically just did exactly what I did there. This now says y equals 7. I can immediately look at this form now and say, OK, y equals 7. So it's kind of nice to have your pivots be equal to 1. It makes it easy in terms of solving things. Not only that, if I go through and look at this equation, I get 2x plus 3y equals 31, what do, I, what do I do? I would plug in 3 times y, so that would be 21 is 31. I would get 2x equals 10, or x equals 5. There's nothing wrong with this, but it's a little tedious and it's a lot of keeping track of things. I can still do row operations and go upwards. If I treat this as my pivot and go up, if I put a 0 there, I'll basically should just get 2x equals 10. So let's try that. 
So what am I going to do? I am going to do this. I'm going to take row 1, and I'm going to subtract 3 times row 2 to get a 0 above that pivot. So what happens? I'm going to leave the bottom row alone. So I will get 2 minus 3 times 0 is 2. 3 minus 3 times 1 is 0. Oh, great. So what is this? 31 minus 2 times, oops, that should be 3 times 7 from there. So it's 31 minus 21 is 10. That basically says 2x equals 10. That's exactly what I have there. But again, I don't need to divide by 2 and write this out. I can just multiply through and take 1 half times row 1 to get a 1 in that pivot. That was my previous pivot. I'll get a 1, 0, 5. 0, 1, 7. If my matrix is now in this form, I can just look at this and say x equals 5, y equals 7, and I don't have to go through and do all this bookkeeping. So doing the row operations, starting at the bottom and going up to get, if I look at each pivot now, I've got each of my pivots is 1. Every number in the column above it is 0. Every column to the left is 0, and every number below is zero. If I can do this, we're going to call this reduced row echelon form, or we will call it RREF for short. Okay. So basically what we're going to do is take our linear system, put it in augmented form, do the row operations so that all my pivots are zero, and this bottom row could either be zero, zero, zeros, or if it's zero, zero number, that means something went wrong, or zero, one, something there. Okay, so we've got this thing, same thing. Our augmented matrix is just representing the linear system, so we just have the coefficients. Row operations are just the same thing we've had before. We can take uh, linear combinations of the rows or multiply a row by a constant. Uh, row echelon form is what we've seen before. This is what's new. It is basically this says that uh, if I look at any pivot, the pivot is 1, any number in the column above or below is 0, and any number to the left is 0. And if you can do that, you found the RREF. Okay. And this makes your life much easier. Most importantly though, it's literally just a command in many things, including MATLAB. Okay, so in terms of row operations, I can take uh, any row, just multiply through by a constant, and makes the new equation is consistent with the original. I can take a row and add some multiple of another row, and I still have something consistent with the original. And I can take any two rows and swap them, and I'm just, just changing the order of the equations, and it's still consistent. So when we did things, when we put things in row echelon forms, what did we do? Is we wanted to solve a linear system. We start at the top row. Right? We, if there's um, anything in the first column, we try to get zeros underneath it. If not, we swap a column, or swap two rows, I should say, if possible. Get zeros underneath. Then we go down to the next row, and find the uh, pivot, get zeros underneath, and we keep doing that until we get down to the last row. If we do that, we get our uh, matrix in row echelon form. For reduced row echelon form, we do the exact same thing for the first step. And then for the second step, then we go back. We start down at the bottom. We multiply to get a 1 in the pivot. And then we do the row operations to put zeros in every column of the rows above. Then we go to a row above it and keep repeating and do that until we get to the very top. 